Hello, Nihal. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? I'm good. How's everything? Good. Good. Everything is. Um, thank you for your time. Welcome to the event. Not at all. My pleasure. So I believe we are still waiting for um, the other participants, and we'll start um, in a couple of minutes.
Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, we are still waiting for um, other participants, so let's um, wait for another five minutes before we uh, begin the session. Thank you.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the pre-event of Petrobol Asia Pacific Regional Qualifier 2021 uh, with the theme Students to Young Professional Conversion brought to you by SPE uh, Young Member Engagement Committee or YMEC. Before we start um, the session today, please allow me to introduce uh, myself. My name is Trima Harika. I'm working for uh, Pertamina Hulu Indonesia as a senior uh, service facility uh, engineer. I will be um, the moderator uh, for today's event and will guide you for uh, the next uh, two hours. Uh, first of all, um, how is everyone? Uh, I hope uh, all of us um, still maintain uh, the positive um, energy and um, high enthusiasm to uh, participate um, actively in uh, this event, uh, despite the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that is still uh, looming. Uh, to ensure that um, our session today um, runs smoothly, I would need your support to um, turn off your microphone, uh, turn on uh, your camera, uh, and more importantly, uh, enjoy the session. Uh, do ask uh, the questions um, during the, the Q&A uh, session. And um, uh, secondly, uh, I would like to extend my warm uh, greetings to our honorable speaker uh, today, uh, Ms. Nihal uh, Munir uh, Daraj. Uh, also the representative of uh, SPE uh, Balikpapan uh, section, Ms. Adelia Nur uh, Fadila as the president of SPE STT Migas uh, Balikpapan student chapter, uh, Mr. Irfad Danu as the project manager of um, Petrobol APRQ 2021, all uh, boards and staffs of SPE, STT Migas, Balikpapan student chapter. And last but not least, um, all the uh, participants and audience, uh, welcome. Uh, glad to have you all uh, here uh, today. Uh, before we proceed with the main event, um, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Putri Diva as the project manager of this uh, pre-event uh, session. She will um, deliver um, her opening speech. Uh, Putri Diva, uh, the stage uh, is yours. You may start um, uh, your speech. Okay, uh, thank you, Mrs. Trimaharika. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to say thank you and welcome to our amazing speaker today, the Honorable Ms. Miha Monidaras, as the incoming chair of Young Member Engagement Policy. Secondly, the Honorable Ms. Sri Maharika Widarena as our moderator today. Third, the Honorable Adelia Novadila as the President of SPS Academics Balikpapan Student Chapter. The Honorable Infad Danu as Project Manager of the Global Asia Pacific Regional Qualifier 2021. The Committee of Petrobol Asia Pacific Regional Qualifier 2021 for their contribution to making this event happen. And last but not least, uh, all the participants who attend this event that's please. Welcome to the pre-event series of Petrobol Asia Pacific Regional Qualifier 2021. Okay, uh, in the transition from student to young professional, of course, there will be an addition that will be met. So students need to know what things they need to prepare to become young professional. On this special occasion, the incoming chair of the Young Member Engagement Committee we will set the important focus place on developing activity uh, in both technical and leadership skills that assist the transition from student to young professional to facilitate and support their career progression. Uh, along with my opening remarks, I hope all of you will enjoy the event and within your insights for today's event that we present to all of you. Thank you for your time and attention. I return it to Mrs. Primarika as the moderator today. Thank you so much, uh, Putri Diva, for the speech. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as I uh, mentioned earlier, uh, today uh, we have our uh, inspiring uh, speaker, uh, Ms. Nihal uh, Munir Daraj. Uh, I will uh, briefly uh, mention her resume. Uh, Ms. Nihal obtained um, her uh, bachelor degree 
in petroleum engineering from Alexandria uh, University and a master degree also in petroleum engineering from uh, Imperial College uh, in London. And in terms of professional experience, uh, she is a reservoir uh, geomechanic uh, engineer uh, with uh, more than five years of uh, working experience uh, for several uh, leading uh, energy companies. Uh, without uh, further ado, uh, I would like uh, to welcome uh, Ms. Nihal to deliver uh, her speech and her presentation. So over to you, Nihal. You may start the um, shared screen. Thank you so much and uh, thank you so much for the warm welcome. Um, very happy to be with you guys here today and uh, I hope I'll be of a benefit to you. And of course, don't hesitate to ask me any questions you might have. So let me just share my screen. Just let me know when you can see my screen, okay? Here. Can you see my screen? Uh, you have started the screen sharing, but there is no PowerPoint slides yet. Oh, okay. Okay, so. What about now? Yes. Now okay. I can see your uh, PPT. All right, perfect. I'm so sorry about that. Okay, so there you go. I have the meeting on, on another screen and I can see that it's not working. <laughs> sorry. It's okay. Take your, your time. Yeah, it's working now? Yes, it is. It's already in, uh, in full screen mode. Yeah, perfect. So uh, what I wanted to talk about today basically uh, is um, the uh, conversion from student to YP and some benefits, which is redundant. You kind of hear it, like the benefits of the membership. But what I really was hoping to convey to you today, why is it important from my experience and from others people experience, the people that I've worked with, right? So I want to start with a quote, like, SP is a great place for a better success. So as uh, introduced previously, my name is uh, Nihal Raj. I uh, work as a reservoir geo mechanics engineer with uh, Advent Waste Management Services uh, within uh, between Cairo and Houston for like six years. And then I decided to go and um, do my master's at uh, Imperial College London. I'm the YMAC incoming chair, and I'm also an SPE guy, uh, um, YMAC liaison. So the distance between the dreams and reality is your SPE membership. How? Let me demonstrate that. This is basically the um, numbers that you see on SPE website. The, um, this is the 2020 SPE membership. See this, the, these are the professionals and students. These are the professionals, the blue one, and the students count up for like this extra number. So our students with an SB are much, you know, in numbers are much larger than the professionals. The account, the, the SBE members uh, in terms of students and the uh, young professionals accounts almost for 70% um, of the total SB membership. So, yeah, this is a very hard slide. Uh, what's happening in the industry today? Uh, obviously, the price, um, the uh, increasing efficiency and unconventional resources. This is something that also you look at. Uh, the third one is going to hit home with everyone, basically, the environmental impact, the sustainability, the new projects about carbon capturing and all these things. Uh, the public perception of the uh, regulations and the uh, image of the industry. Like back in the day, I used to say I'm working as a petroleum engineer and everyone was like, wow, that's great. Right now it's not so much, you know. 
um, the increased innovation and use of technology and data, which means that being just a petroleum engineer is not enough. You need to know coding, you need to know a lot of things about digitalization, right? So um, with all that happening, how SPE fits in. <clears throat> So the challenges facing the EMP industry, as I said, the high um, resolution of su subsurface imaging. And why is that? Basically, uh, the energy transition, right, is happening right now. And everyone is talking about the CCUS and how you can store the carbon that you capture from the air in the subsurface, right? So it, to look into that, you need the geologists and the engineers. But with all the roadmaps and all the talks, they always saying like the fossil fuel is bad, right? And these people are bad and we don't need fossil fuels anymore. But to be able actually to store the carbon dioxide within the um, geological storage, you need the, the geological people and the petroleum engineers, as well as um, actually 90% of all the carbon ca carbon storage that is happening is happening in association with the EOR operations. So they need us, right? Um, again, uh, the things that the, the industry is looking at right now is the geothermal, the hydrogen, the uh, energy efficiency, the energy poverty. Uh, one thing that I would like to say that the uh, Chair of Guy always says, like, act like an activist and think like an engineer. So, uh, SBE role in the industry. After I said all this, uh, what is SBE doing? Um, what do we need to look at? So, SBE has, um, as you all can know, you know, international events like ATCE, online resources like papers and webinars, regional events, online networking, and um, recognition as a word. Uh, publications and grants and all these things. The thing that I wanted to add is that SB stays very aware of what's happening in the market. So for example, when we started talking about like carbon capture, you so that we have Gaia program that is basically focused on sustainability, focused on knowing what is our role as petroleum engineer in the sustainability and in all these new projects and in all these new changes. Uh, I don't know if you know, but SB has also a technical section for digitalization. So if you're interested in that department, you can meet with actually world leaders and industry leaders in digitalization. So these are some of the SBE resources. So uh, for students, I'm not gonna expand much. I'm pretty sure you guys are better than I am in knowing the, uh, the uh, resources available for the students. And for the young professionals, I would like to introduce you to a few things. We are basically in all, hopefully all SBE sections around the world, right? You can join right after graduation. Uh, we have the uh, YP Awards and Spotlight on YPs. Spotlight on YPs comes in, um, I think, the way ahead, right? And we also have the Energy Influencer of the Year. That's also um, a great award or a great recognition, which can be very helpful for your resumes. We have the Ambassador Lecture Program, I'm sure you're familiar with, which is basically a YP visiting a student chapter. Um, one Petro a great resource, the JBT, Journal of Petroleum Technology. We have the e-mentoring platform. You can basically, if you're interested, let's say for in, in, in drilling, you can just log into e-mentoring, request uh, a mentor. And I don't know, he can be a drilling manager and you can like build a relationship with that person. And, and maybe, I don't know, I'm not saying promises, but maybe we can work for that person later on or he can help you get a job or... It can help you do, I don't know, scientific paper or anything. And we have the webinars and training courses. Uh, students always have um, some sort of free, um, you know, tickets to the training courses and stuff like that. Um, also, one thing uh, that I wanted to mention to you is ELA. 
Emerging Leader Alliance. I'm not sure if you guys know that. It's basically um, Emerging Leader Alliance is um, kind of a um, collaboration between seven societies and the U.S. Army, right? Uh, SPE sponsor, I'd say eight people, five people. Like it, it changes every year, right? To go to the U.S. and take an in intensive one week um, training in leadership, right? Like all presentation skills, everything with other societies. And you would be joined by also SBE um, staff and the AIME president usually attends that every year. It's, it's great, it's a great experience. It needs its own you know, slide deck and its own presentation. But um, I think the, uh, um, the um, applications are opening soon. So if there are any YPs here or like a master students or something like that, you are more than welcome to apply. And this is one of the things that the great things actually that uh, SBE does for its YPs. So you need to be part of that. Yeah. So to find more about the SBE YMEC, we have the LinkedIn and Instagram pages. We announce everything there, so you can um, check us out there, or just email us on yp at sbe.org, and um, they are very responsive. They all answer you. Um, very fast. So yeah, thank you so much. Any questions? Uh, okay, thank you, Nihal, for the um, insightful uh, presentations. Um, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will soon start our Q and A session. Uh, I would like to remind you that you can uh, ask uh, your question uh, in English by uh, raising your hand or uh, type in your questions in the chat box and I will uh, read the questions uh, out uh, later. Uh, while waiting for um, other participants to ask questions, uh, perhaps uh, I can start uh, with, with an entry question. Uh, as you know, uh, and, and you may experience yourself that uh, transitioning is, is uh, daunting for everybody, right? Uh, especially for students that are about to, to transition um, from college to, to professional uh, workplace, right? Especially um, in the current context of oil and gas business, uh, as you've mentioned earlier, we, we are facing um, a tough challenges, uh, which makes um, the industry uh, is, is pressured uh, even more than before. And, and we need to adapt to that, right? So uh, based on your own experience, uh, what kind of, of challenges that um, uh, could be faced by uh, young professionals and uh, how can uh, SPE uh, help about that? Or how can SPE uh, address uh, specific, uh, those specific uh, challenges? Thank you so much. So that's actually a great question. So um, I know the first generation. I know like you're, you got your petroleum engineering degree. You're maybe like on top of your class and have great grades and you're just graduating and you cannot find a job. And uh, because there are no slots basically. Hmm. So, yeah, I feel you. Uh, I've been there. Uh, I'm going to talk about it from different point of views, right? And, and you can be the judge of that. I, I'm not just going to put words in your head or your mouth, right? So uh, the first thing to do is keep your SP membership. And I'm serious. Why is that? Um, some people would say, like, I'm not working in the industry. I cannot find a job in the industry. So, no, I'm not going to renew my SP membership, right? Which kind of seems logical, right? <coughs> but then you'll be burning bridges. You will be basically um, throwing away everything you've done throughout the student chapters, all your connections, all these things, Right? So this is not the right thing to do. You have to always keep contact with everyone you, you knew, with your um, network. That's, that's one thing. The second thing, see the alternatives. 
So we have the uh, SPE, um, the, the what, what do we call it? I'm sorry, the, the Curry Pathway Fair, right? It's basically, it has like some sort of um, sessions about what other careers you can get into. Like I was saying earlier, the, C, the CCUS, the hydrogen, all these things. I had students reaching out to me and saying, well, these things are okay, yeah, that's fine, but what can I do? Just give me something tangible that I can do. Just don't come here and say CCUS and just leave, right? So what's important is having the key skills that can be transferable to anything else. You have your geological background, right? From your geology, you can get the poor volume. And I'm really being specific here, right? When you, when you get like from your knowledge, your technical knowledge, you can get your poor volume. You can know the trapping mechanism of the gases and also that CO2 within this pressure and temperature won't be a gas. So you're increasing your storage capacity, how to calculate your storage capacity, how to actually um, calculate your uncertainty in the storage, right? Your P50, your P10 and your P90. You all recognize that, right? All these things fall into the CCUS in the carbon storage. So what you need to do is to excel in your studies and just know that you can shift these things and look into something else. Maybe not oil and gas, maybe it's the other way around rather than producing or injecting, but then you can turn these things around, right? Staying with SB, as I said, we have the Gaia program right now. You can literally get in touch with world leaders within uh, these, these parts. Uh, one company I would um, suggest you look at is OGCI, Oil and Gas Climate Initiative. It's basically a company that is made of 12 other companies, right? They're all talking about the climate change, uh, the methane, the carbon capture, all these things. And also they produce reports, right? Uh, what are these 12 co companies that made this company? Do you, anyone knows? I'm happy to tell you. It's Total, Chevron, ExxonMobil, Petronas. Like, look, right? It's Saudi Aramco. It's our companies. So just know that the skills you have are transferable. You can do it and keep your SPE membership. I swear it, it will come in handy. I, I was talking the other day with uh, a president of a certain uh, student chapter in a very reputable university. He's doing his PhD in petroleum engineering. He said, you know, after I graduated, I let my uh, membership lapse. I didn't renew it because I didn't find a, a job in the industry. But right now I'm back and I miss so many events. I miss so many people. Like the connections don't know him anymore or like don't remember him, right? So just being there is, is very, very important. One thing else, I'm gonna give you like a, a scenario, right? You work in digitalization, right? And uh, you're great, you're super, you moved into like the data science world, right? You get hired by Microsoft, you're sitting in your office, your manager comes in and say, hey, you're a petroleum engineer, right? Microsoft has a, an oil and gas business. So since you are a petroleum engineer and someone who knows data science, they take you and put you in the oil and gas sector or oil and gas business. And you need to reach out to one of your SBE connections but you're not an SBE member anymore, right? So don't burn bridges, just stay with an SBE. You will get benefits, right? You have your first two years of membership for free. You don't need to pay anything. So just be there and put your 100% in and, and trust me, trust me 100%, it will pay off. Even if it didn't get you a job, it will get you like maybe a scholarship to a university to, to do your master's and PhD. If it didn't get you this, it will get you into programs. You know, like these leadership programs and these uh, great opportunities where you can travel, to, I don't know, to a conference in somewhere in the world. They require to see leadership evidence. So you can talk about the work you did in SB and how you made a difference. So you can use it this way. So like, if you think about it, it's always benefits. Oh yeah, thank you. I hope that answers the question. 
Yeah, uh, indeed, I, I, I do uh, very much agree with, with your points that um, uh, being um, uh, an SPE member uh, will offer you uh, a great uh, benefits. Uh, as, as your um, presentation tagline, uh, you mentioned there that SPE is um, actually a great place for better success with all the vast um, networking resources, um, uh, any technical reference that you need uh, are actually available there. So yeah, uh, I do agree that uh, being uh, an SPE member uh, can be can be helpful to leverage uh, your career. Uh, there are two uh, participants that um, would like to ask a question. So um, I would let them to, to um, ask the question uh, directly. So first, uh, I would let uh, Prab uh, Preet uh, Singh, I hope I pronounce your name correctly. So you may unmute yourself and just uh, ask the question to Nihal. Yeah, the name was spelled very much correctly. Thank you. Uh, hello, ma'am. This is Prapreet Singh from India. So I basically had one very genuine question that uh, when I visited SP International's website, I accessed the training section and I got a list of many webinars, but no pre-recorded sessions as such. So I can you know view the past events that I missed. So any suggestions on that? Yeah, uh, sure. So uh, the, the training courses within SP are paid actually. So uh, they usually come within um, some sort of workshop or um, alongside a conference, right? But sometimes SB makes some resources available for the public. For example, a couple of years ago, there was this amazing reservoir um, course that they made it for free. That's, that's one thing. Uh, the other thing right now that you can compensate with, basically, if you, you cannot find any training courses, is the DL um, sessions, distinguished lecturers. Right? These are people who are like the top of their game. They are presenting about like well testing, um, hydraulic fracturing, like whatever you're interested in, you can stay tuned for these uh, within your local section of, or if I think it's okay to attend with other sections as well. So yeah, the deal program is, is just amazing. And if you get in contact with these people and ask them questions, it's, it's gonna be um, great. Also within your uh, local student chapters, they invite people to give training courses. Um, I'm pretty sure your um, section does as well, your um, student chapter, yeah. I hope this answered the questions. Yeah, very much, ma'am, thank you. Right, uh, thank you, Prab. Um, so we move on to the next uh, question. Uh, Ah Mohammed, uh, you may unmute yourself and ask the question uh, directly to Nihal. Oh, all right. Uh, hi, hello. Uh, and my question was about like uh, currently, like the companies, uh, oil and gas companies, uh, what applications or skills they're demanding from the fresh graduates specifically, like. Uh, like beside the basics, of course, like a team navigator and like uh, office uh, applications, like is there any specific applications that we have to focus on that we all should know? Okay, specific applica applications, you mean like software, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, software. Yeah, so to be honest with you, I, 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 don't, I don't know, <laughs> right? But the, the things they are looking at, for example, as I said, one part is the um, uh, the uh, coding and, and stuff like that. So I'd imagine like Python, R, SQL, and, and, and these things, right? In terms of the technical work within that does not involve coding, we would be looking at Petrel, of course, and uh, all the uh, reservoir simulators because they still, Again, looking at the carbon capture, there are like a huge part of all the companies looking at the carbon capture, uh, especially after Shell got sued, right? So uh, if you don't know that, Shell got sued because of their emission and they uh, were advised to cut their emissions by, I think, 50%, if I'm not mistaken, by 2030 or 2050, something like that. 
So uh, they're looking at carbon capture again. They will be looking at the geological formation. So your betrayal, good old static model. And um, again, when you inject, they will be looking at the um, eclipse or like, again, the embedded um, reservoir simulator within the, uh, the betrayal package or other packages like T navigator, as you said, and, and, and all these things. One more thing is the geomechanics because they need to see if the pressure build up and if it's gonna trigger seismicity and stuff like that. So again, any um, geomechanics, you know, software package would be essential in this as well. Right, so uh, Mohamed, uh, do you want to elaborate more on your question or? Sorry? Uh, do you still want to ask another question? <laughs> thank you, thank you, yeah, I got it. Okay, okay, so yeah, but one point um, which uh, I, I really agree with you is that um, I think the current trend now is, is moving into um, digitalization so yeah, uh, uh, coding or, or computer uh, engineering skills, uh, yeah, would be would be uh, really advantageous for uh, young professional. And uh, but apart from from the technical uh, skill sets, uh, Nihal, I think uh, the non technical uh, skill sets like uh, communication, uh, uh, teamwork, uh, leadership, uh, and. Uh, uh, and, and the, the, the willingness to be to be uh, innovative um, are really uh, essential as well for, for young professionals. And um, does SPE also uh, facilitate uh, this uh, non-technical skill sets uh, development for young professional? Yeah, thank you for this question. So actually uh, SPE has a uh, committee called BML, Business Management and Leadership. Uh, they kind of take care of all these um, courses, soft skills, webinars, and stuff like that. And um, we as YMEC and Member Engagement Committee, uh, we are planning a YP Congress with them. I think it's next year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's basically about all these things. Also, within ATCE, each year, YMEC has a session on communicate or a workshop on communication skills and like the soft skills that needed for you to success, right? To succeed, I'm sorry. Uh, one, one thing else that I was mentioning, the ELA, if you would apply for that and take mm -hmm. one, you know, one week extensive courses in the US with the other engineering societies and US Army, and as people basically pay for you, right? So that's that's one thing I wouldn't basically let let slide. Yeah. And another thing that I would like to share with you guys is basically um, some of my my personal journey. So um, I don't know if that's that can help, but um, I'm just gonna um, say it to you. So maybe you can get inspiration or, or, or something. So, um, as I told you, I was working with, um, with uh, Adventic Race Management as a reservoir geomechanics engineer, so like literally very 100% technical, right? Um, but um, I think my, I'm, I'm okay with like the leadership roles and like all these things. This is why I just channeled all this energy with an SP, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when I joined uh, Imperial College, uh, I was working a lot with, um, well, the usual technical work, and then we would work with the resources management. You, we would look at the resources management, and SPE has like um, a great committee called the SPE PRMS, which is uh, also talks about like the resources management. They work closely with the UN United Nations on these topics. So I was able to get a, an internship with the United Nations to work with them on the um, energy intensive industries and write a brief with them, have the experience of talk to the policymakers and the policymakers means basically the um, ministers of energy around the world 
And the, my recommendation actually to work with the UN came from SP, right? So this is something that I um, would like to flag out there that you, you, can, you can do that, you can join. And if you're interested in something like that, you can apply for the UN and SP can help you. Well, that's that's uh, very interesting, right? Um, uh, you, you mentioned earlier about ELA um, program. Um, does that open for um, uh, students from other nationalities other than than US or yeah, just so a specific US citizen? No, it's open for everyone. Actually, everyone is encouraged to apply, but it's for uh, young professionals, right? Not uh, not students. But if you're a master's student, you actually finished your undergrad, so you can apply too. Yep. So yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So I, I went on that program in 2017, I'd say. Yeah, I think 2017. It, it was in uh, Washington, DC. But these were like the most amazing days of my life, honestly, like five days, just intensive leadership program. Program. You get to present, you get to have the people comment on your presentation saying like, no, you were too loud. No, you were too, you know, you were talking like in, in a monotone or something like that. So one thing that I learned there is just not be afraid of experimenting. And the things that might look intimidating to you might be really good for other people. For example, uh, they told me that, you know, shout. Is it okay to shout in a presentation? Like I, I've never heard anyone say like shout in a presentation. But then I was explaining something uh, and I went like, because, and everyone was like, you know, giving their attention to me and they thought that this was great. For me personally, I thought like I was very clumsy, right? So the one takeaway that I, well, not one, the one takeaway, but like one of the major takeaways I got from this is basically you can be, you can see the, the picture from your shoes and the other people's shoes, and you can mm -hmm. like assess the situation and just um, get get the great feedback from great group of people because each engineering society sends five or um, like depending on the number again like from five to eight engineering stars right the leaders they they think they are leaders so you would get a feedback from a very talented group of people which is obviously great and. Um, lecture himself is like uh, an author and like um, best-selling author. It's not just like an author, right? So they bring best of the best. Um, one, one thing also is um, how to know your personality, right? So it's not, there is a paid, um, like it's, it's with a lot of money. I think it was like $200 or something that SBA sponsors that you take a test and they tell you the, you take the test and other five people that know is you take the test and you see yourself from your perspective and from their perspective and let me tell you i thought i'm some type of a personality everyone else thought that i'm another type of personality and they all agreed and they were right so when i looked at the attributes of this personality it was me like i'm results oriented i am impatient like all these things right and the beauty of that is it shows you who you are what is your personality and uh, what is your strength what are your weaknesses and then it shows you how to work with other types of people as well like what this person wants from you and what do you want from them and how to get it and how to keep yourself happy and the other person is happy as well so yeah it was really an invaluable experience and i i, I really encourage you all to apply for it Wow, I can imagine um, the, the 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 experience and 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 that you got from from that event uh, must be uh, must be uh, very worthwhile. And and you get um, you mentioned earlier that you get uh, like a three hundred sixty uh, feedback from other perspectives, uh, which are really good. Uh, in fact, in 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 the professional uh, workplace, you will need that kind of feedback. From time to time to to improve um, your knowledge and skill, right? Uh, so, 
Yeah, uh, I would like to invite uh, other participants uh, who wants to um, ask questions. Uh, you can uh, raise your hands or type uh, your questions in the chat box and um, I will uh, read the questions or you can uh, uh, unmute yourself and ask the questions uh, directly. Okay, while waiting for uh, for the others, um, I think we have a question uh, in the chat. Right. Uh, ah, yes. Okay, so yes, Putri Diva, you may unmute yourself and uh, mm -hmm. just ask the question. Okay. Uh, hello, uh, Mrs. Michal. Uh, if you need, if you need to do, uh, I would like to ask. Uh, SP has several benefit uh, programs to help young students to prepare for professional. Uh, may I ask uh, if there will be another upcoming amazing program that we will get uh, access to work and insights? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the question. So, um, of course. You might heard about the merger between SP and AAPG. We're not 100% sure on it right now. I think we will know after ATC um, until like the board meeting and they like agree on everything and, and we will see if it's gonna happen or not. But then if that happened, um, like everything in the world, it has pros and cons, right? Uh, if it's happened, then we will I think uh, Nihal might have uh, some problems with the network. Uh, we will hear from her shortly, I believe. Right, so um, while waiting for uh, Nihal to get back uh, online, uh, I remind uh, again to all of you who uh, would like to ask uh, questions, you can type in in the chat box uh, and uh, we will uh, mention your questions uh, to Nihal later. So, okay, uh, the committee, are you uh, getting any update from Nihal? Okay. Okay. I'm so sorry about that. No problem. <laughs> yeah, it's um the network, right? Yeah, the network. I'm so sorry about that. No problem. So, yeah, uh, I was answering the question about the new project uh, and talking about the APG merger. So, uh, uh, as you know, like they have great programs uh, in terms of their YPs, like the Imperial Barrel Program, right, and other programs. So, basically, we might be able to merge on something like that. Uh, one thing else, I don't know if you guys know about it, it's called the YP Summit. It's um, a great, great, great you know, program within the AAGE um, um, annual conference. So it's basically AAGE, SEG, SPE. So it's it's like a, some sort of a collective effort between all the societies. And we do great, great programs, right? So it can be the case also for the AAPG merger. Um, one, one thing else is that as long as the industry is changing, we will always, you know, stay diligent. And we would always put out their content and uh, technical sessions that are beneficial for the members. So that's 
that's like you can literally rely on SPE when it comes to keeping up with the industry. Yeah, but hopefully after the merger, uh, there will be some good uh, programs as well available for uh, for young professionals, right? As you mentioned. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like uh, some some part of me like wants the merger to go and uh, like go forward and look into the other opportunities. But then another part, so this is going to be a lot of work, you know, as yeah. the incoming YMEC um, chair, we will have to merge and we'll have to come up with new ideas and stuff. So it's going to be a lot of work, which I don't mind as long as it serves the, um, you know, greater good of our members. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, uh, we have Raj Kumar here uh, okay. with a question. Hello, Raj. You may unmute yourself. Hello everyone. Uh, it's very nice to be here, and uh, I think this is my first time I'm uh, participating in Petrobol. So my question is that how Petrobol is challenging for a person who is here for the first time, mm -hmm. and what and what opportunities can we uh, can we think of that can uh, come in the future, and what uh, what uh, what things do we need to be prepared for the uh, for the first time if if someone is participating for the first time, I and mean, what challenges can one face? Okay, what are the challenges? You're going to see them for yourself <laughs> because it's different from one person to the other. Yeah. But let me tell so, you, it's, yeah, you want the, the common one or the average, as we say in the yeah. Indian right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so basically um, it's yeah, different it's because yeah. it, it, it was in person and right now it's online, right? So the in-person challenges are very different from the online one because see the in-person you're there you're in the ATC or like the, the actual venue uh people are cheering so people are looking at you you're up there on a podium so maybe like fear of public speaking or like fear of if you have an answer and you say the answer and the answer is wrong and people think you're stupid right which is not the case this is just in your head right so uh that's that's one thing at least this is from my perspective i answer something wrong it's like people will feel i'm stupid but it's not the case it's not always like it. maybe you understand the, the, the question wrong or maybe you don't know the answer of the question and that's okay too because the people who put the questions are basically um you know professionals who has a long time have been in the industry for a long time right so just fear nothing be yourself and channel your technical knowledge into answering these questions um and also if you have something that you think is wrong just do an appeal uh, i'll tell you something in the last petrol ball um someone was saying something about the um, formation factor so basically you know the formation factor is, is um you know a um, a ratio or reservoir to to surface right so the definition was kind of altered and they made an appeal and they won it because basically what they were saying is right. But again, what was written is right as well. So don't fear to channel your opinion, right? So answering, answering one way or another, it, it can be the case. We try as much as we can to have the, the questions that doesn't have many point of views, right? Like, um, I'll, I'll give you an example. If you looked at the um, wire line, right? Is the clay bounded water from the effective porosity or not? Like there are some opinions about that, right? So yours is not wrong, but maybe the written is, is the other point of view. So don't be afraid to, to come forward and say that. That's one thing. <laughs> right yeah so um what else what else like are the the challenges i i don't know like i've been i've been a judge i've never been in the virtual ball itself I've, I've been a judge so i've been like on the relaxing side of situation like, i'm just imagining with you right uh just just you know challenge again your knowledge channel your energy it's a great experience whether you win or not you're a winner right so just don't be afraid to but all of your knowledge out there it's 
it's it's a great experience and the, the teamwork is, is is beautiful honestly so other things that i think added to the complexity of vector ball from the last year part is typing fast right because it's online now so typing fast you have to practice to type fast you have to um practice to speak fast and be like ha have all of your gadgets around you so like maybe your mobile phone so you can like check the buzzer and stuff like that so right now we're trying to eliminate the internet you know factor because it's limiting to a lot of people but then again you have to know how to write it to type fast i think the last year's winners were from malaysia if not, no, no that was a poem university but when of the finalists were from malaysia yeah i think it was from malaysia and and I, I was asking them like what what are the things you you train to do rather than just the questions or the technical questions? He said like typing fast because otherwise you lose time. So I think that's that's something you can um, you can look at as well. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, that that explained my uh, question very well. Uh, thank you for so thank you for the answer. No. Yeah. yeah. So Looking that's one. Uh, yeah, so that's one strategy from Nihal uh, on how to to win the petrol ball, right? You, you need to <laughs> to type uh, very yeah. fast. Okay, uh, Muhammad Rafli is here uh, with a question about uh, YMAC. So, Muhammad Rafli, you may unmute uh, yourself, please. Ah, okay. Uh, he's having a, a bad signal, so I will just uh, mm -hmm. read his question. Uh, is there any occasion or opportunity that students member uh, get into one of part of uh, YMAC? Uh, student members, like as a student join the YMAC? Uh, yeah, I think officially? that's the, the question. No, no. So it's young member engagement committee. You have to graduate to join us, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. we do have a uh, part, uh, it's called student integration. So we work with you guys, basically. We work with you. We um, we're the one doing the petrol ball. If if you don't know that, right? Like the the petrol ball um, global is organized by YMEC. Uh, we are the people who are doing uh, the the trivia and, and like all these student programs. Right? We we are the ones who are doing this. So we do work with you, but you cannot join as um, basically as. Um, a um a member a working member of YMAC until you graduate okay so you need to to uh graduate first uh and attain your bachelor either your bachelor or or master degree right uh no Before just you just bachelors it. you're not an undergrad okay. and you can join uh, basically we open the call uh every um March, I think it's it's always open in March. So if you apply in March, you can join after the ATCE of that year. Okay. Uh, right. So uh, we still have uh, quite some time for the Q and A. So I encourage uh, all of you who have uh, questions uh, for Nihal, uh, do not hesitate to. Uh, type in your questions or unmute yourself and ask the question uh, directly by yourself. Uh, I have one one um, question for you, Nihal, uh, about um, mentoring, right? Yeah. Because uh, based on my own experience, um, uh, one thing that could really help you uh, while transitioning into becoming a, a young professional is to to get a mentor, right? That that can uh, share his or her uh, knowledge um, to you, either technical or, or soft skills, and and uh, that could really help to to um, to leverage uh, your your career uh, basically. Um, can you elaborate more on, on that uh, program, uh, in, whether in SPE or, or YMAC, uh, about the, the, the mentorship and okay, how can yeah. the students can, can participate in, in that program? Yeah, sure. 
So I'll tell you three stories. All right. One, um, not from the SB point of view, but it's basically a general point of view about mentoring and how to select your mentor, basically. So your mentor should be someone who cares, not someone who's disconnected, right? Because yeah. some people can be like disconnected emotionally and you know, mentally from you. That's not what you want in a mentor, even if this person is the CEO of a company, right? Uh, what you need from your mentor is to care about you, care about your progress. You want someone who does not, you know, give you a slack. You need someone who raised the bar high for you so you can, you know, reach your highest potential, right? Someone who says like, yeah, okay, you're doing fine. And just leaving you in your comfort zone is not, is not a good mentor. He's like a good friend, but not a good mentor, right? So you need to choose wisely who you think can be your mentor. Having said that, um, I've been blessed to have two mentors actually through SB. I got my job through SB, by the way, right? Um, my mentor was the one who created the uh, BP Challenger program, if you know that program. He was one of the people who created that. And he would always raise the, the bar high for me because he knows I care about him. He's like a father to me. He always comes to me and say, don't embarrass me. And he knows like this will trigger me to reach my potential, not to embarrass him. So yeah, having a mentor is something essential. I was blessed also to have his wife as my mentor as well. She's also a second mother to me. His wife was the, uh, the deep water um, project manager for BP for years, actually in different parts of the world. And she would like, she said like she mentored a lot of people on like when to get pregnant, when to get married. And like in your career, for example, when to start a family, it's, it's very crucial. Maybe you don't think about it right now because you're like undergrad students, right? But then later on in life, when to start a family is very crucial to your career, right? So I would say mentoring is, is one of the pillars of excelling in your job and excelling in your career. Uh, with e-mentoring, just try um, when you, you know, use the platform to know what you really are looking for and what you really want. And you can basically, um, so, so it's, it's three months, I, I believe, and then you can move to another person, right? Just try to select the optimum person. It might not work from the first time or second time or third time, but then you will know. Um, right and try to make a lasting impression that lasts beyond the first impression right so you can connect to this person even if you decided after this three months this person is not gonna be my mentor right or for further you just you know establish a connection with them they might come in handy later on right and try to get as much as you can from the person even if what you expected is not there let me give you an example. So once I had the um, mentor through e-mentoring, right? And I was looking, um, I was doing a project and I was kind of looking for someone with a very specific technical expertise. He had them on his, you know, profile, but they weren't, when I talked to him, it's like, you know, reading this resume of someone and then just like verifying that it's not really what you're looking for. It's just remotely related, right? So I started talking to him and he started to just like see what he can help me with, right? I presented everything to him and say like, I have this and I have that. And what, what do you think about this? And blah, blah, blah. And then he said, you know, I can help you with this. So he spotted on something and he was really good at it. And that something was the visualizations and the um, type of things that I put on my presentation. Right. And let me tell you something, you can do very hard work and very excellent work. And if you're not able to present it in a perfect way, it won't look like you did a lot. Some people literally don't do anything, but they have great presentations. Right. So he added a lot to me in that department. And I was able to, to do a great job because he helped me in, you know, the visualization and the presentation part of it. And this person actually works for Schlumberger. Right. 
Um, so, you know, Schlumberger are like on the top of the world when it comes to presenting to clients and stuff like that. So if you don't think that you find what you expected and the mentor you met through a mentoring, just look for something else that this person can give you, right? Because let me tell you, like everyone you meet in your life, even younger than you, even a kid, you can learn something from. Right, so just don't waste the opportunity of learning and and jumping on the opportunities and taking advantage of everything in a good way, of course. Yeah. So, um, do you suggest that uh, this young uh, generation uh, find their mentor uh, starting from from the college uh, or or? better uh, after they, they enter the, the professional uh, world? No, What's of course, like, as, as soon as you can. If you're in school, like not even college, if you're in Sorry. Yeah, so if, if you're in school, get, get a mentor. You know why? Because basically, um, if the better or the sooner you know what you want is the better. Because if, for example, you're, I don't know, in the second year of school, you know, you want to, you're talented in coding, for example, and you want to go somewhere in like, I don't know, digitalization, you will still start learning from now, you will start to know like the softwares, the courses, you will start to do like all these things, you will start to look for an internship. So by the time you graduate, your resume is actually ready for the position you're, you want to apply for. So yeah, getting help in that, I would say 100% is important and 100% matters. Yeah, yeah. and SPE uh, could definitely help you and facilitate you on that, right? To, 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 find, you, to find you a good uh, mentor. Yeah, right, I'll, so. I'll tell you something, like, uh, but uh, I, I hope I don't like get you know, slaughter for it. I'm not gonna mention the name of the person, but the person who uh, was on the board of directors at that time and started the SBE digital section uh, was the um, digital, he, would, he worked for Shell, right? He was the um, digital transformation lead for Shell, right? And he started that section with an SPE. And then uh, when he retired, he went to teach for uh, Houston University, right? So if you're in connection, hypothetically with that person, he would put you on the way of, you know, being smart about digital transformation and what to learn and what to do. And then if you're still in contact, this person went to Houston University and maybe you're applying for a master's or a PhD there, right? And he can help you. Right. So this is how it, it actually works. People move around, you move around. If you keep your connections, you'll be able to get places and do things. Yeah. Uh, Raj Kumar is uh, here with um, with a question about mentoring uh, again. Um, so basically, he's asking about um, how do we start with that uh, mentoring opportunity? How do we uh, get to that step by step? How do we find a good mentor, and and how do we initiate the conversation? Because it can be uh, challenging, right, uh, for students to to start, um, you know, the conversation with a uh, with a senior uh, professional. Yeah, that's that's hundred percent true. It's like I don't want to say that, but actually, it's like you know. Uh, going to a girl and starting with a catch line, you know, so either it goes really right or really wrong. So SPE basically made that really easy for you, right? So you have the mentoring platform, right? So you just get in, you request the access, you find a mentor. And what you do is you request this person to mentor you. And that's it this person would say yes and he would start immediately with the goals like SPE did that for you they did the first step for you you will request this person will approve and they will have they actually have like a timeline and like the goal you're setting you have to set that your goal in the first week and then you have to follow up on one two three four and they send you updates and they send your mentor updates and all these things so it, it's made easy by by SPE <coughs> I'd say you start with SPE. 
uh, with the e-mentoring platform and then go from there. If um, this person is great and you're happy for them to continue as your mentor, then you can talk to them personally. And this is basically the uh, aim of the program. Or um, you can go other route with that person, like, you know, um, ask for it again in the e-mentoring or like ask for another person in the e-mentoring. So, yeah. Yeah. So basically what you're saying uh, is just start with SPE, right? Because it offers you uh, a lot of uh, benefit for your uh, future professional um, career. Right. So uh, again, I encourage um, other participants uh, who wants to um, ask questions to Nihal. So while she's still here with us, so do Can not, I ask uh, them a question wait. though? Ah, uh, yes. That <laughs> yeah. could um work as well yeah so guys like i i want to ask you a question uh what do you think ymec can help you with or like what what do you want ymec to help you with or sp to help you with this is can be like a great insight you might give us an idea that we can have you you know working with us on it and blossom into something great It's just a matter of what you want. I don't want you to give me Hello, ideas. <laughs> what do you want? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. My name is Raj, and uh, yeah. So I think uh, when we get into college, we are uh, very much into the academics, and uh, we do not have much opportunity to uh, to think beyond the academics, and it's just limited to the subjects that is uh, there in the college. So if we wanna explore more things about the department and the industry that is going on, like the magazines that published by the sp like the jpt that i read every month every month and and the and the opportunity that sp presents in front of the young uh, young members like the volunteering thing that is present there uh, to be uh, to be a volunteer in different activities that it offers so it not only helps us to explore the industry but it also helps help 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 helps us to to uh, to initiate a conversation with a professional or to or to build up uh, communication skills the presentation skills and and to connect with people not just uh, in, a, in our college but also over all over the globe so that is a big big thing that uh, that uh, that it helps to get it started with okay so um, you want sp to start doing that you're saying yeah, I mean, SP is doing great that job, and I'm I'm quite sure that uh, in coming time uh, I will get benefited from it. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And also, like you have SP Connect platform. Basically, it has like this volunteer opportunities part of it. You can literally be whatever you want. I'll tell you something. So, SP needs people to volunteer in the um, I don't know the the awards committee, right? So just be there and just evaluate the process. Um, does this person, like just rate people, like this person has 10, this person has nine. If you think about it, this is like not an enriching experience at all. You know, like you just go in, you read the resume of people and, and then just give them a score. This just to help to see like who's, who's, who needs, uh, or not needs, who, who deserves the, um, an award, right? For your personal growth, that's not not much, right? Thinking about it, but then if you think about it in the other way, you'll be looking at other people's resumes, so you can better do your your own. That's one thing. The other thing is that you'll be able to see other people's career path. Do you want to take this? Do you want to do this? You can learn uh, about these people, you know, programs that they participated in, right? They they went to like leaders of tomorrow program. What is leaders of tomorrow? You'll try to like kind of search about with leaders of tomorrow, which brings that up. There is an application open for something called leaders of tomorrow. It's uh, between Tikal and like these things. I'll send it on the chat. You guys can check it out and you can basically apply for it, right? So it's this way how you get to know about other programs. And um, it's this way also how, how to get your you know, um, gain on on the personal development. So even the small things that you think it's gonna be a waste of your time, you can still benefit from them, you know, and having a broad experience on an awards committee that maybe, you know, get you later on, on something that is even bigger. Yeah. Okay. 
Ah, yes, uh, I, I very much agree with you that um, uh, uh, being a, a volunteer, especially for SPE, can offer you uh, a greater uh, opportunities for, for your uh, future uh, career, right? Uh, so, Ah Mohamed uh, is raising his hand. Uh, do you have questions, uh, Mohamed? Oh, yeah, hello. Uh, sorry, just now I earlier forgot to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Mohammed and I'm from Turkmenistan, uh, SPCC in Malaysia. And uh, I wanted to ask uh, regarding the LinkedIn, uh, like uh, how to utilize it to the maximum, our LinkedIn, and uh, the importance of LinkedIn in uh, landing a job or networking with the professionals. Like, what do you think about that? Okay, so LinkedIn, there are like, uh, I think, a lot, I think a lot, you know, things about how to set up your LinkedIn profile and blah, blah, blah. So these, these I think are important, but not in the conventional way. I'll tell you what I, what I mean. So basically getting a job through, I've never gotten a job through LinkedIn, right? Like never, maybe it's different for other people, but not for me. But think about it. I'm pretty sure, um, Lots of people on this call are now checking my profile LinkedIn to know who I am, right? So you apply. Some, you know, some some companies would ask for your LinkedIn handle, right? Or if you're talking with someone, giving that you're one of the committee members, right? You will have basically um, a lot of interactions. They will log into LinkedIn and look at your LinkedIn profile. So it has to be spot on, right? It might facilitate something. Maybe it will get you a job. For me, it was not the case. But again, they will be looking at it. So, yeah, you, you definitely have to, you know, um, work on your LinkedIn profile. Because right now, it's, it's like your resume online and they can find you. And if they're like, I don't know, prime members, you cannot know if they viewed your profile. So, yeah, like we, we like this kind of secrecy. Like you want to check what other people are doing, but then you really don't want them to know. So, yeah. 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 Apart from, from uh, LinkedIn can, can lend you a job or not. I think um, uh, your point, uh, Nihal, about uh, resume, I think it's, it's very important. So you need to, you guys uh, need to start uh, listing down uh, your skills, your experiences in a way that uh, it's easy for, for the companies to, to, uh, to sort you among other, other candidates. So, so I think it's, it's, it's uh, very important to have a well-structured um, resume, right, Nihal? Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. And, and also like if, if like some, some companies are actually recruiting through LinkedIn, right? So they are looking for keywords. So what do you actually need to do? Like if, if you, if someone is opening my, my LinkedIn page right now, you'll see like petroleum engineer, uh, diversity, uh, machine learning, artificial, these keywords would help people when they like searching. Like for example, if you want to search about someone who's working in reservoir engineering at Equinor, what you will write in the search, reservoir engineer, Equinor, right? So highlight these keywords that you would like yeah. your name to pop up when people are searching. So that's that's 100% crucial. Thank you so much for mentioning that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I think we still have question uh, here uh, on the chat box. Uh, Kais is here. Uh, you can unmute uh, yourself. Yeah, hello. Uh, hello, uh, yes. Thank you for giving me this chance. And my question, ma'am, is about uh, the important uh, advices and the guidelines that can help us in forming a good career based on your experience, based on what you go through during your uh, uh, academic journey. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I would say when you're a student, you basically need to focus on your academia. You, you need to focus on your grades. You know, sometimes grades don't really matter, but your understanding of the subject really matters. So if you're, you know, good at understanding your subjects and uh, getting good grades, I know that's like killing two birds with one stone. So yeah, it's great. So focus on your academia, focus on what you're doing, try to excel in it and try to understand everything, right? 
that's this part and try to add your experience i would say like in in extracurricular activities and volunteer work not necessarily with sb and maybe sb with other societies as well that's that's fine sb is a plus because it's well known and it's um, a professional volunteering so you're learning along the way so yeah if you add you want to add more that's that's absolutely fine uh, as i was saying um building your resume very well before you graduate so you are you know very attractive to companies is something that is that you have to do you might do all this and then still graduate and you can you can find a job so yeah it's it's a possibility too uh which would happen to me to be honest with you right but the key thing is just never stop trying and just be persistent and you will find something along the way you will hate yourself you will hate sp you will hate everyone right but then you have to come back on track and i'm, I'm talking by the way from personal experience i couldn't find a job and i was on top of my class and like all these things and i i by the way i let my membership lapse just some like laying it out all there right and then i came back i met my boss and he was like do you want to work for us and i was like yeah duh right and then i i got my job and and then my career you know like kind of blossomed so never stop trying when you stop trying you failed that's that's you know i, I heard like i think Brianka Chopra say something <laughs> the other day she said like uh fail 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 and then uh, rise like a phoenix so yeah just just don't stop trying and, and work on yourself always yeah, I really like um, your quote there. Uh, just keep persistent, um, keep being stubborn for, for the good thing, right? Because life um, uh, never just, uh, you know, filled with a success uh, story, right? Sometimes we failed, but we, we, we got to learn from that and, and be better, right? Yeah. Um, Mohammed is uh, here with a question about... Um, once we graduate from uh, bachelor, should we proceed to master or, or start uh, finding job? What's your thought about that? Okay, so before you graduate, not once, before you graduate, you apply for both, right? You apply for your um, master's and you apply for your job, whatever comes first. If you still wanna go you know, and, and get a master's, Getting a master's while you have industry experience is a huge plus. You'll be able to better understand things. You'll be able to perform better on your um, studies. Uh, you'll be able to apply for scholarships. Like for example, achieving scholarship, you have to have two years of experience, right? So that's the good side. Uh, you weren't able to get a um, scholarship and you, you didn't apply for, uh, and, and you, you didn't get a job, right? and you have to go through your master's. What is the good side? You're fresh out of college, you know how to study, you know how to take notes. It was really hard for me to relearn how to take notes, right? So either ways, where the life takes you is, is great. I, I'm, I'm being vague about this because there are so many different opinions out there, right? Like the master's is 100% plus for you uh, and some people's opinion, right? When you apply, it, it can really boost your application when you apply for a job, by the way, uh, if you have master's rather than just bachelor's, right? But sometimes you won't be able to understand the 100% behind the operational situation because you haven't been there, right? So what I'm saying is just go in all the ways you can and then maybe you know, what, whatever is best for you is, is going to come your way and then you can work it out from there. There is no right answer to this question, to be honest. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Nihal. Uh, does that answer your question, uh, Mohammed? Yes, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so um, I think I will um, give opportunity for uh, one or two more questions before we, we um, continue with the next session. Uh, 
so um, yes, to other participants, do not hesitate to, to type in your uh, questions in the chat box or just raise uh, up your hands. You guys, I sent you the link I was talking about in the chat. And you know, it's not fair. I'm answering your questions and you're not answering mine. <laughs> like, just let me know what, what, what do you think? Where, where do you want to go? What do you want? That, that's yeah. all. Yeah. So, um, okay. Uh, perhaps uh, I will discuss about uh, one more topic about um, innovation, right? Um, uh because all these young people they, they have uh sometimes not sometimes but many times they have these bright ideas um uh from their their chat their studies uh, back at, at the universities uh etc so uh and they have this uh you know uh full energy right to contribute more to 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 the industry um how can spe uh, support that uh for for young uh professionals uh, to foster more about uh, their uh, innovation. Okay, so innovation in the industry, we're basically, um, you can literally, whatever is happening in the industry, like as, as something innovative, they will write a, a, a paper about it and they will publish it on one petrol, right? Yeah. Or like uh, one of the SBA conferences, right? This is like the, the path for the companies. I'm not talking about people. And what SP is doing with the students, master students and PhD students is the paper contest. Give us your idea, right? Write it in a paper, compete and pitch it. And the judges will tell you that this is a good idea or like you're the winner. So you can basically take of money, you know, like if, if you win, you will you will take money, and then you will get visibility as well at the the winner of the uh, the uh, student chapter or, or uh, sorry the, the winner of the paper contest. So I met someone once who won the um, the paper contest as a student, and he got job offers from Schlumberger and Halliburton to adapt his technology. They said we will sponsor your master's and PhD. And you will work for us to get, you know, um, this technology working within our, you know, technologies uh, within Halliburton and, and, and Schlumberger. So I would say what SP is doing in fostering innovation is just giving you the opportunity to get your ideas out there and to channel them through the right channels and maybe get opportunities uh, out of them. So that's, that's something that I think uh, people would be interested in just, you know, knowing about their ideas and how feasible they are and you'll be accompanied with um a whole lot of judges that has a very heavy experience in the industry so that's also a plus like there is room for improvement what can i do and stuff like that so yeah i hope this answered the question yes yes i think uh, uh your 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 answers uh, are really clear and uh indeed uh well, you guys do not um, uh, do not uh, hesitate to to speak up uh, your ideas, right? Because any ideas uh, do uh, matters and and uh, enrich uh, your uh, professional writing skills. Because uh, I think Nihal uh, will also agree with me that uh, it can really really help you uh, in your future uh, future career if you can uh, 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 write up about your ideas uh, in, 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 in a good way, right? Yeah. So um, yes, uh, I think we do not have an, uh, more questions from the audience. Uh, so I guess we, we will move to the next uh, session, uh, which is the um, uh, giving memento uh, session. So um, the representative from the committee uh, would like to, to um, deliver uh, a special uh, memento to, to you, Nihal. Uh, thank you so much for being a, a wonderful speaker today. Um, I'm sure that uh, all of us here um, have learned so much uh, from you. So uh, I think uh, the 
one of the representatives from the, the committee would like to deliver the, the speech. Uh, okay, thank you for Mrs. Primarika. Uh, hello, Mrs. Kimial Modigaraj. Uh, my name is Subadano, I'm the project manager at Petrobol Asia Pacific Regional Qualifier 2021. And on behalf of Petrobol Asia Pacific Regional Qualifier 2021 Committee, I would like to give uh, you a memento as appreciation as our speaker at the pre event of Petrobol Asia Pacific Regional Qualifier 2021. Hopefully, uh, today's event will be useful and give a uh, positive impact for all of us. Uh, okay, uh, to the operator, uh, please take a picture. Okay, thanks anyway. Uh, I will take a picture for Mr. Nihal and Infar Danu. All right, one, two, three. Yeah, done. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you, Bamba. Uh, I return to Mrs. Primarika. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Irfat Danu, for, for the um, uh, speech. Um, before we go to the next session, um, I believe that the committee uh, has prepared um, a feedback form. Uh, I think the, the link to the feedback form should appear on the screen, uh, both on the screen and also on the chat box. And uh, the participants, uh, you will uh, need to, to uh, fill up um, the feedback form uh, in order for you to get the uh, e-certificate. And then the feedback form uh, will be very uh, beneficial for um, the future committee uh, in, in preparing uh, the next uh, Petrobol uh, event. So your participation is uh, highly appreciated. All right, so um, while uh, waiting for you to, to fill up the feedback form, uh, I think um, we now uh, come to the final uh, session of today's um, agenda, uh, which is the, the, the photo uh, session. So uh, those participants uh, and, and audiences that are still here with us, uh, you may uh, turn on your camera so that we can uh, take uh, our uh, nice picture um, together, right? Uh, so, um, but before that, I think um, uh, one important key points from, from uh, Nihal's uh, presentation is that uh, for you uh, guys, uh, students uh, who are now uh, about to transition to become a young professional, do not hesitate uh, to be part of uh, SPE. Uh, do not hesitate to be part of uh, YMAC. Uh, be the member. Uh, if you haven't, just, just um, uh, join uh, SPE membership uh, as soon as possible, right? So you uh, will get... Um, a lot of benefit that uh, can really leverage um, your future uh, career. So uh, we have reached uh, the end of our agenda today, uh, but I would like to remind uh, all of you that um, there are still two more uh, pre event uh, sessions uh, left, uh, which are um, last year Petrobol uh, winner sharing session, which will occur on June uh, 13th and how Petrobol impact uh, post-graduation uh, by alumni on June 20. So do not miss uh, those events. Uh, I'm sure that uh, all of you uh, will enjoy uh, that sessions and a benefit uh, from, from the speakers. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's all for uh, today. Thank you so much. Um, uh, to, for your active participation. Uh, appreciate it uh, very much. And also last, not, uh, last but not least, uh, thank you so much, uh, Nihal, for your uh, wonderful uh, presentation and insightful uh, sharings. Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, young generations, uh, young professionals that are here uh, today uh, could really uh, uh, benefit from, from uh, your presentation. 
Okay, so uh, I, I pass uh, the microphone now uh, to the uh, committee to take uh, the picture. Okay, this uh, in here uh, are four slides, and I will take picture for slide one. I start with the count one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Next for slide two. One, two, three. Okay. Next slide. One, two, three. Okay, last slide. One, two, three. Okay, done. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much. So um, my last words, perhaps, uh, good luck to um, uh, the participants. Uh, I hope you 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 can gain uh, more knowledge uh, from from this competition. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Nihal, for being with us today. Um, I hope we, we can uh, meet again, uh, meet again uh, someday in, in uh, other uh, occasion. Thank you so much for the committee. So Thank you so much for having me today. And uh, really, I'm waiting for all your application to IMEC. We would love to have you all, all the hundred of you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you all. So uh, have a nice day and, and goodbye. Thank you, thank you, see you, bye bye. Thank you, see you. Mbak Tri, thank you Mbak Tri.